Welcome to a new tutorial on my channel. In this tutorial we will make a simple full stack website using Yango and React, where we will learn how to use CRUD operations and authentication process using JWT. This is a demo for the project and I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot of new things. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see the latest tutorials on Welcome my channel. To my channel. Now let's today's start. tutorial, we'll build a full stack web application using Yango for the backend and React.js for the frontend. With a deep dive into the code, let's get started. First, we need to set up our development environment. We'll start by creating a new project directory and setting up a virtual environment Yango, the web framework we'll use for our backend. Yango REST framework is a powerful toolkit for building web APIs. Yango REST framework simple JWT, SYN web token authentication support for Yango REST framework Yango admin start project backend, creates a new Yango project named backend, in the current directory python manage py start app posts creates a new yango app named posts those are the commands that we will need right now to start our yango application now we need to open our project and go to the settings file but what is this settings file the settings py file is created when you run yango admin start project it contains all the configuration settings for your yango project the initial comments provide links to the official yango documentation for further reading installed underscore apps lists all the apps that are enabled in your Yango project. Yango Contrib apps, built-in apps provided by Yango. Third-party apps, apps like REST underscore framework, REST underscore framework underscore simple edgeot, and corsetors that we installed using pip. Custom apps, the posts app is our custom app created for this project. Middleware, a list of middleware components that process requests and responses. Middleware is executed in order and each one performs specific tasks. Root URL, specifies the Python module, where the URL patterns for your project are defined. Databases, defines the database configuration. Engine, specifies the database backend to use. Name, specifies the name and path of the database file. Now let's create our post model. First we need to import some stuff. The first imports Yango's models module, which provides the base class model, and various field types for defining database models. The second imports the user model from Yango's built-in authentication framework allowing us to create a relationship between posts and users. Next we will define a new model class named post that inherits from models.model, which is the base class for all models in Yango. This tells Yango that post is a model that should be mapped to a database table next to the author line. This creates a many-to-one relationship with the user model, meaning each post is authored by a single user, but a user can author many posts. On delete cascade, this ensures that when a user is deleted, all posts authored by that user are also deleted, maintaining referential integrity. And related to posts this adds a reverse relation, allowing us to access all posts by a user. The title line defines a string field with a maximum length of 100 characters. It's used for short text fields like titles. The next line defines a large text field suitable for storing the main body of the post. Unlike char field, text field doesn't require a max length argument and is used for longer text. The created at line defines a date and time field that automatically sets itself to the current date and time when the post is created. The auto now at equals true parameter ensures the field is set only when the object is first created and not updated thereafter. And the final two lines defines a special method in Python that returns a string representation of the post object. In this case, it returns the post title. This is useful for displaying meaningful information about the model instances in Yango's admin interface or when the object is printed. When we define a model in Yango, Yango automatically creates a corresponding database table with columns for each field we define. Yango uses the model's metadata to create efficient SQL queries and manage database migrations, which are changes to the database schema. The foreign key field with on delete equals models cascade ensures that our database maintains referential integrity, meaning that deleting a user will also delete all related posts preventing orphaned records. That's it for the post model. In the next part of our series, we'll create the views and serializers needed to interact with this model via a RESTful API. Now let's make a new file called serializers, and inside we will make the user and post serializers. First the user serializer. We first define a new serializer class named user serializer that inherits from serializer's model serializer. Model serializer is a shortcut that automatically creates a serializer class with fields, that correspond to the model's fields. This nested meta class is used to specify metadata options for the serializer model equals user, specifies the model to serialize. 
which is the user model in this case fields, specifies the fields to be included in the serialized representation, and the extra specifies additional settings for fields. Here, it makes the password field write-only, meaning it will not be included in the serialized output, but can be used to create or update a user object. Next the create method. This method overrides the default create method to handle user creation. Validated data. This dictionary contains the validated data for creating a new user. This creates a new user using Yango's built-in create user method, which handles hashing the password and other necessary steps. Then we return the newly created user object. The post model is the same but the extra is different where here this makes the author field read only, meaning it will be included in the serialized output, but cannot be used to create or update a post object. Serializers in Yango REST framework work similarly to forms in Yango. They validate input data and convert it into a format that can be easily rendered into JSON or other content types. By using model serializer, we leverage Yango's ORM to automatically generate fields and validation logic based on our models, reducing boilerplate code. The extra Quarg's parameter allows us to customize the behavior of specific fields, such as making the password field write only or the author field read only. Overriding the create method in user serializer lets us handle special cases like hashing passwords, ensuring that sensitive operations are performed correctly. That's it for our serializers. In the next part of our series, we'll create views and endpoints to interact with these serializers. Now let's dive into the views. First, we define a new view class named post list create that inherits from generics list create API view. List create API view is a generic view that provides get and post methods for listing and creating objects. Then we specify the serializer class to use for this view, which is post serializer and specifies the permission class to use for this view. Is authenticated ensures that only authenticated users can access this view. Then the get query method. This method defines the query set for this view user equals self request user, retrieves the current authenticated user. Return post objects filter, author equals user, returns posts authored by the current user. Then the create method this method handles the creation of a new post if serializer is valid, checks if the serializer is valid. Serializer save author equals self request user, saves the post with the current user as the author. Else, print serializer errors, prints validation errors if the serializer is not valid. Then the delete, this line defines a new view class named post delete that inherits from generics destroy a PI view. Destroy a PI view is a generic view that provides a delete method for deleting objects. Then we specify the serializer class to use for this view, which is post serializer and check permissions. Then we use the get query to return posts authored by the current user now for the create user view. First we specify the query set for this view. In this case, it's all user objects then specifies the serializer class to use for this view, which is user serializer and finally specifies the permission class to use for this view. Allow any ensures that anyone can access this view, which is appropriate for user registration. Generic views, Yango REST Framework's generic views provide a lot of built-in functionality, allowing us to handle common actions like listing, creating, and deleting objects with minimal code. Permissions, the permission class's attribute lets us control who can access our views. Is authenticated restricts access to authenticated users? while allow any allows public access. Query sets. The get query set method allows us to filter the objects returned by our views based on the current user, ensuring that users can only interact with their own posts. Serialization, by specifying serializer class. We ensure that data is validated and transformed according to our serializers. Maintaining data integrity and providing clear error messages when validation fails. That's it for our views. In the next part of our series, We'll set up the URLs to connect these views to endpoints, making our API accessible now for the URL file. The path posts, this specifies the URL pattern. In this case, it's posts. This means that when a request is made to your domain slash post, this will match. The as view part, this connects the URL pattern to the post list create view. The as view method is called to convert the class based view into a view function that Yango can use. Then the name. This gives the URL pattern a name. Named URLs can be referred to in templates and other parts of the code, making them easier to manage and update. The next URL is the same but for the last part. In the link the int pk part is a path converter that captures an integer value from the URL and passes it as a keyword argument to the view. pk stands for primary key. URL routing. Yango uses URL routing to direct incoming HTTP requests to the appropriate view based on the URL pattern. This is defined in the URL patterns list. Path converters. 
Path converters like int pk capture values from the URL and pass them as arguments to the view. This makes it easy to work with dynamic URLs that contain variable parts. Class-based views. By using as view on our class-based views, we convert them into view functions that Yango can call when a matching request is received. This method handles the instantiation of the view and the dispatching of the request to the appropriate handler method, git, post, delete, etc. Named URL patterns. Giving URL patterns names allows us to reference them easily in templates, forms, and other parts of the code. This makes our URLs more maintainable and less error-prone, including other URL configurations. By using the include function, we can reference other URL configurations, promoting modularity and making our URL routing more organized. This allows us to keep our URL patterns manageable as our project grows. Modularity. Separating URL configurations into different modules helps keep the code base clean and maintainable. Each app can have its own URLs file, defining its specific URL patterns. Now we need to make two commands. The first one is the make migrations to make the migrations needed, and then migrate to add the models that we created to the database as a table. After that we will create something called super user to access the admin panel. Yango comes with an admin panel that we can access, but to do that we need to create a super user that has access to it. After we created the user we will run our server and test it. This is the admin panel and you can access it with the credentials of the super user that we just created. After that let's try to access our post root, and when we try to we will get error that we are not authenticated and that is because we made the is auth true in the views. So to authenticate we will need to make a front end using react and then login, and access the posts. But before that let's make the auth urls. The api token url connects the url pattern to the token obtain pair view, which handles JWT token issuance. The refresh URL connects the URL pattern to the token refresh view, which handles JWT token refresh. The auth URL specifies the URL pattern for DRF's built-in authentication views. This includes the URL configuration for the default authentication endpoints provided by the Yango REST framework. JWT authentication the token obtain pair view, and token refresh view views handle the logic for issuing and refreshing JWT tokens. These tokens are used for authenticating users in a stateless manner, including other URL configurations. Using the include function for REST framework URLs adds a set of default authentication endpoints provided by the Yango REST framework. This simplifies adding authentication functionalities to our API. Now if we try to access the routes we can create a new user using this interface. And now let's go back to our code to make the front end. But first we need to install the cores package to handle cores errors, where we ensure that our backend is configured to accept requests from your front end. And next we need to add some code to the settings file to for the cores. After that we will go to our front end. I will link the front end and backend code in the description so you can use them and don't write with me. When you install the front end just use the npm install command and then you can use the react code. Now let's start explaining the code and start with the app file. It uses react Erter to handle navigation and routing within our application. We'll walk through the code step by step, explaining how everything works under the hood. Let's get started. Browse Erudder, a router that uses the HTML5 history API to keep our UI in sync with the URL. Roots, a container for all the roots in our application. Root, a component used to define a root within our application. Navigate, a component for programmatic navigation. Page components, components representing different pages in our application. Logan, Register. Home. Not found. Protected root. A custom component that protects roots from unauthorized access. Logout function. Local storage clear. Clears all data from local storage, effectively logging the user out. The navigate redirects the user to the login page. Browse router. Wraps our application, enabling routing functionality. Roots. Contains all our root components. The path specifies the URL path for the root then renders the home component within a protected root component. This ensures that only authenticated users can access the home page. The element login renders the login component. When the URL matches login the logout element executes the logout function. Clearing the local storage and redirecting to the login page, the register and logout element executes the register and logout function. Clearing the local storage and rendering the register component the not found element renders the not found component, typically displaying a 400 for error page. React Erter manages client-side routing, allowing us to create a single-page application with multiple views. State Management, using local storage to manage authentication tokens, enabling persistent login sessions across page reloads. Conditional Rendering, 
the protected root component conditionally renders based on user authentication status. Now the form component used for user login and registration. We'll walk through the code step by step, explaining how everything works under the hood. Let's get started. Use state, a React hook that allows us to add state to our functional component API, a custom module for handling API requests. Use navigate, a hook from React or DOM used for programmatic navigation. Access token, refresh token. Constants that hold the keys for storing JWT tokens in local storage. Form.css, a CSS file for styling the form. Loading indicator, a custom component to show a loading spinner. State hooks, we initialize state variables for username, password, and loading. Username and set username, manages the username input state password and set password, manages the password input state. Loading and set loading, manages the loading state use navigate hook allows navigation to different routes programmatically. Name, determines whether the form is for login or registration based on the method prop. Handle submit, an asynchronous function, that handles the form submission then, we set the loading state to true when the form submission starts. Then we prevent the default form submission behavior the API post sends a post request to the specified route with the username and password. If method is, login, stores the JWT access, and refresh tokens in local storage and navigates to the home page. If method is register, navigates to the login page catch block, displays an alert with the error message if the request fails. Finally block, sets the loading state to false once the request completes. Then form, defines the form element and attaches the handle submit function to the on submit event. And finally export default form, exports the form component as the default export, making it available for import in other parts of the application. State management. React's use state hook allows us to manage and update the component's state efficiently. API interaction. The API post method abstracts the details of making HTTP post requests, simplifying interaction with our backend. Navigation. The use navigate hook from React or DOM enables programmatic navigation, improving user experience. Local storage. Storing JWT tokens in local storage provides a way to persist user authentication across page reloads. Next the load indicator, which only show a loading icon while the page is loading. After that there is the post file, which only shows the post that we have with a delete button to delete the post. Next we have the protected root. It ensures that only authenticated users can access certain parts of our application. We'll walk through the code step by step, explaining how everything works under the hood. Let's get started. State management. This authorized state determines whether the user is authorized to access the protected root null, initial state. Indicating that the authorization check is in progress true, user is authorized false, user is not authorized. Use effect hook, runs the auth function, when the component mounts then calls the auth function and catches any errors. Setting is authorized to false if an error occurs refresh token function, handles the token refresh logic. Local storage get item retrieves the refresh token from local storage. A PI call, sends a post request to refresh the access token using the refresh token. On success stores the new access token and sets is authorized to true else sets is authorized to false error handling catches any errors and sets is authorized to false auth function handles the authentication logic token absence if no token is found sets is authorized to false token decoding decodes the token to get its expiration time token expiration check compares the token expiration time with the current time if expired calls refresh token to get a new access token else Sets is authorized to true. Loading state, renders a loading indicator while the authorization check is in progress, is authorized, if true. Renders the children, else, redirects to the login page, and finally exports the protected root component as the default export, making it available for import in other parts of the application we are using JWT tokens for authentication, validating and refreshing tokens as needed. Now the home file. This component is crucial as it handles fetching, displaying, creating, and deleting posts. We'll break down each part of the code to understand the mechanics and concepts at play. Let's get started. State variables, posts, stores, the list of posts fetched from the backend content and title, store the values for the new post being created. UCFECT runs the getPost function once when the component mounts. Dependency array, an empty array ensures this effect runs only once. A PI call sends a get request to fetch posts. Response handling updates. The post state with the fetch data. Error handling. Alerts the user in case of an error. A PI call. 
sends a delete request to delete a specific post. Response handling alerts the user about the result and refreshes the post list. Error handling alerts the user in case of an error. Event handling prevents the default form submission behavior. A PI call sends a post request to create a new post with the provided content and title. Response handling alerts the user about the result and refreshes the post list. Error handling alerts the user in case of an error. Post section, heading, displays, posts. Mapping posts, iterates over the post array, rendering a post component for each post. Create post form, form structure, consists of input fields for the title and content, and a submit button. Form submission, calls create a post on form submission. React hooks, use state, manages local state for posts, title, and content. Use effect, fetches post when the component mounts. A PI interaction, api.git, Fetches the list of posts api.delete, deletes a post. api.post, creates a new post. Conditional rendering, displays posts dynamically based on the fetch data. And that's a wrap for the home component. We've covered everything from fetching data to handling user interactions and rendering content dynamically. Next we have the Logan page, which just takes us to the API token root, and the not found page which displays a 400 for page. And finally the register page, which takes us to the register root, and that's it for our simple full stack application. I hope you liked it, and if you have any questions you can ask me down below. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next videos.